Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady, here to help you become an expert primary maths teacher so that all your children become fluent, creative and confident with their maths. This is the 10th video in the series on teaching maths to children aged 6 to 7 and in this video I'm going to explain how we teach time so that all children come to deeply understand and be able to work with time at this level. In this video I'm going to explain why children find time so difficult, how we start to teach them to know different units of time and have a deep sense of them and how they relate to each other, and I'm going to talk about how we start to teach children to tell the time with an analogue clock. Right, let's get started by talking about why time is so difficult. So with length and the other measures that I talked about in the previous video on measure, it's really easy to objectively see and experience how long something is and that something that's twice as long you can see that it's twice as long and the measures are all metrics so a meter is a hundred centimeters a centimeter is 10 millimeters a kilometer is a thousand meters and that was true with capacity and with mass as well and time is just not like that sometimes a minute lasts for ages Sometimes it's gone so quickly and that's a genuine experience of children. It's much harder to objectively judge and have a real sense of time unless you use measuring devices. And then there are 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour and 24 hours in a day and seven days in a week, 52 weeks in a year and 365 days in a year. It's all a chaotic mess of numbers. That's really hard to deal with, especially at this level. And then using a ruler was tricky enough, understanding that the numbers are on the lines and so on. But what about using a clock? It's one of the trickiest things to learn to do. So all in all, time is definitely the trickiest topic in this year of teaching. And it's so important to understand and recognise and appreciate that. So the key units of time we're focusing on this year are minutes, hours and days. So we want to start by talking about what these units of time mean to children. Can we set them the challenge of estimating a minute and see how they do? What could you do in an hour? And we want to talk about how many minutes there are in an hour and how many hours there are in a day. Now, those are arbitrary facts. They're not logical like other bits of maths. They're something people decided long ago and have stuck with. So they're things that effectively have to be rote learned in the end, that there are 60 minutes in an hour and 24 hours in a day. So we ensure they're learnt by talking about them in rich contexts that children understand and then by practising those facts and checking that they're known. You can, of course, provide the context of going from seconds to minutes and then to hours and then to days and then to weeks and then to years. The seconds, weeks and years are not the heart of this year's teaching, but it's absolutely fine and wonderful to stray into them and do some work on them while you're there. Why not? And so that brings us to our hugely challenging task of learning to tell the time. So the first thing to check is do children know what clockwise means? Can they show you clockwise? Can they translate that understanding into the movements of hands on a clock? Because if they can't do that, they're going to struggle. So you need to do plenty of work on that to establish that first in PE, in physical movement. And you want to do that over several days so that children get to sleep on it and come back to it and check that they've understood it and remembered it the next day. Don't forget the importance of sleep in learning, not just at this stage, but at every stage of life. So they need to know they're clockwise and they're anti-clockwise and they need to be able to show you when the hands of a clock are going clockwise. And it helps that the numbers are going in order when the hands are going clockwise. That's going to help them keep on track. And then the next thing is to ignore the minute hand and just concentrate on the hour hand. So we're just using the minute hand to move the hour hand just now. And just by paying attention to the hour hand, we can see what time it is approximately. We ignore that minute hand. That 
is about halfway between 11 and 12. And then we reintroduce the minute hand gradually. We say, well, when we're on the hour, that minute hand is always pointing at 12. When we're halfway between the hours, the minute hand is always pretty much pointing downwards because it's done half a circle. That shows us that we're halfway through an hour. Where do you think the minute hand is going to be when we're quarter of the way through the hour? Well, if we just follow this, a quarter of the way around the hour is here. Three quarters of the way around the hour is about here. And if you've done some work with fractions, with circles, it's ever so helpful because I can picture that much better. So we've got our quarter past the hour and our three quarter past the hour, which is also quarter to the next hour. And then we can draw out a bit more detail. We can show that the 60 minutes are shown as we go around the hour. So the minute hand shows the exact number of minutes past the hour, up to half past the hour, which is 30 minutes past. And then it becomes a bit more complicated because we're thinking to the hour, but the numbers relate to past the hour. So we have to count back from the top. So that's five to the hour, but it's also 55 minutes past the hour. Now, some children find it helpful if you use your counting beads to show the minutes. Let's just show how that's done. So here I've sectioned off 60 counting beads. We'll just get rid of the other 40 and we place them starting here at the 12 going round the clock like this doesn't fit exactly so we have to sh carefully show the children I'm using those 10 beads for that these 10 beads for this these 10 beads for this part and if you've got it flat on a desk you can put it in position better so that the Counting beads make a nice circle outside. So these are your 60 minutes. So what's going to be halfway through the hour? Well, if we just take that out the way, just fold these in half as we did with the 100 counting beads originally, children can really see that that is 30 minutes is half 60. What about a quarter of the way around the hour? Starting from zero and going a quarter of the way. Well, our half of a half to find a quarter is going to be the 15. And you can spend ages playing with this and understand that the 60 minutes of an hour are cut into two halves of 30 minutes and the quarters of 50 minutes each. And then we can start to talk about our five minute intervals, five past the hour, 10 past four, we can link that to counting in fives. Again, we can get out the counting beads or the number squares to help us count in fives, to help our fluency with that. And again, it can be useful to go back to the 60 counting beads here. And we can talk about times, if this is four o'clock and this is five o'clock, what's this time here? There, that's five o'clock. This is five minutes before five o'clock. It's also 55 minutes after four o'clock. We can see that in the clock as well. We'll just turn it onto here to show that time. Five minutes before five o'clock is also 55 minutes after four o'clock. So hopefully now you can see quite how much is going on there as we try to help children understand this really tricky topic telling the time and you've got some sense of how slowly you're going to have to go to lean into each of these ideas and help children explore it. Now it is absolutely essential that children play with geared watches and clocks where the hands move properly together. So you might have some clocks like these. If you haven't then send a message home or around your staff who's got some old watches where the batteries have gone. And hopefully you'll get some watches that are not necessarily working, but you can pull out the stopper and children can move the hands and replicate what you're doing. And you can ask them to show you times and they can get there slowly in ways that will make them think much, much more deeply about how time moves than if they were just moving free moving hands on a clock or drawing hands on a clock face. 
they need to move geared hands. And then you can also ask them to do challenges like show me this time and then show me 10 minutes later. What's that time? Discuss that with them. Of course, they can do it in groups. And it gets even better if you can persuade parents to buy their children watches with analog faces to wear in school and also to work with them at home. So the more you can engage parents on this topic and tell them that you're trying to teach children to tell the time, maybe before Christmas, if you could get them to order a watch for Christmas and then wear it to school and wear it at home, practice their time telling after you've taught it as a topic, it's a great time to do it and then hopefully it will really stick. It's such a tricky thing to get and then it's so quickly forgotten. But once you've taught it, you want to keep it going through the year constantly pointing to the classroom clock and asking somebody to tell you the time to keep that knowledge live and keep these discussions about how we puzzle out what time it is going. It might be that a child's really confused by this use of counting beads at first, but later in the year they'll come back and they'll get it and it'll all click into place. So your takeaways from this video is that time is the hardest topic to teach to this age group. Secondary school language teachers always come across the problem that when they're trying to teach children the time in a foreign language, they discover that they don't actually know how to tell the time at all. That's an insight into quite how hard it is. So we need to give children real experiences of time, connect their understanding of time to their real life experiences, understanding that sometimes those units of time will seem much longer and much shorter, and that's normal for the same unit of time. We need to talk about how minutes, hours and days connect, that there are 60 minutes in an hour and 24 hours in a day and how they relate to what's going on in a clock face. And then we need to slowly and carefully teach children to tell analog time, concentrating first on the hour hand and then on how the minute hand shows the detail within the hours. Good luck with this topic. It's a real tricky one. If you've got any thoughts or ideas or questions, please paste them in the comments to build out this discussion. Please do subscribe to the channel if you've not already and give us a like if you could, that'd be great. And share these videos with your friends or colleagues who might find them useful. There's a list of all the videos at www.authenticmaths.co.uk forward slash videos. You can ask me questions live any Sunday at nine o'clock British time. And we also discuss all these videos and the ideas around them in the Expert Primary Maths Teaching Facebook group. Hope to see you again soon. I'll be back with the next video, which will be all about teaching money to this age group shortly. Bye for now.